In this tutorial, we're going to be diving deep into the Roto setup, explaining the how and the why of it. In general, the Roto setup is a very common tool that you'll be seeing at most studios, if not all. It has two main purposes. It's used for outputting files in an organized way and for quality control. As an artist, you care more about the second thing because it's going to make your life easier in many ways. As you can see, I already have a Roto set up on my Node Viewer. We're going to go over the different parts that comprise it. We got the area dedicated for the plate on the top right side. This is the area where you put the plate along with any transformation that you might require to actually do your Roto, such as stabilize. On the left side, you have the area dedicated for your work. This is where you're going to be putting your roto nodes, your filters, your merges, all of that stuff. And then you're going to decide to which channel are you going to be sending that information. Is it going to be the red channel, green channel, or blue channel? So then all that information is going to make its way to the bottom and meet at this point with this merge. And it's going to be put together. So why do we isolate the roto like that? There's multiple reasons for that, but as an example, when it comes to hair, we want the hair detail to be separate from the main shape. Because that way, the compositor can do some modifications to the hair detail if necessary. If it were to be in the same channel, let's say in red, he or she wouldn't be able to do that, right? Then all this information is going to travel even further to the left side, where the quality control area is, to the right side, where we have the area dedicated for outputting the files. So when it comes to outputting files, they care mostly about this pass. Why? Because it contains all the information. It contains the solid values and the semi-transparency, such as the hair detail that we see over here, right? Now, if you look at the core pass, you'll notice that all of the transparencies are gone and we're left with the solid values. Now we're gonna be moving on to the quality control area. Let's look at the first section, which is like the area where the plate and the alpha meet for the first time. So we have the plate and we've got the alpha. I personally find this one very useful because you can switch quickly between them and compare. It offers a very simple and easy way to check that things are actually matching. Next, we're going to be looking at the mask view. This one simply uses a merge operation to apply the alpha that we have rolling in the background to the image. Then we get the cutout as a result. This one is just another option for you to compare your work against the plate. I personally do not use it. Next, you have the gray view. This one is very useful because it reveals a lot of the issues in your work, such as unstable edges or shapes that are working against the others. So you might be wondering, why are we using this background? The reason is a 50% gray really exposes what's going on with your work, particularly with the edges, as you can see, right? They kind of stand out in this view. And depending on how dark the shot is, you might want to adjust this color a bit. If we look at a different file, you'll see that this image is quite dark. If we actually look at the gray, you'll see that the advantage that we had before is kind of gone we actually need to switch the value here. And now we're exposing the edges of it more. But even with this, dealing with dark images is hard. That's why you have the different views to assist you in QC in your work. And finally, we got the core view. In this view, we just wanna see that the edges of our shapes are not exceeding the edges of the object or character that we wanna roto, as well as having the same distance between the edges of our shape and the outer edges of the character object that we're trying to roto. It has to be the same throughout or else it might be an indication that something is wrong. Moving on, the final thing to understand is what's going on over here. So all that we're doing here is we're just putting the sections so that we can render our files, right? So we can render the gray, the overlay, the core and the motion blur. You can actually even render this one as well, but this is something that's normally not done. Normally they just want this four because they're the one most useful ones. And that's pretty much it. You don't have to worry about creating this file yourself. I already did it for you. You can find the link for it in the description below. If you have any questions or concerns, leave me a comment below and I'll make sure to answer. Also, please do me a favor and like the video just to make sure that like the content that I'm doing 
it's actually helpful for you. Also, please subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all of the lessons that I'm sharing with you in this channel.